Welcome back to the Tim and Steve Show. I am Tim Beard. I'm Steve Morris. How's it going, Steve? Yeah, it's a dreary day today, but we it's need dreary. some rain. We do. Normally, I don't like rain, but I was at the land yesterday, well, last night. Thank you for helping me get the plants in. But uh, My pleasure. Really dusty up there. And that's how it is up there. It's either dusty or like slippery, slimy crap that you can't drive in. There's no in between, it seems like. So, we could so use... by crap, do you mean mud? Yeah, mud. Not crap, crap, but, you know, slippery junk soil that, yeah. Yeah, it looked good when we were digging in it yesterday. It looked like you had some good... Yeah, the topsoil's good. I, I took that off from the field and brought that down because I'm trying to put in dirt up there so I can put a slab in. And, yeah, it's a nonstop thing, but getting there. Yeah, but... it's looking good. Look totally different than the last time I'd. Yeah, been it's there. it's definitely getting there, uh, making good progress. So it's just super time consuming, and it's not a uh, it's not easy to find time nowadays. But eh, we're getting there. It was nice to get the garden in though. Like I finally feel like I, it's in. We got a little bit of rain last night and this morning, but we need some more, obviously. Yeah, but we need like a quarter inch of rain. That was actually the thing I was going to order last night online that I didn't was, whew, probably what. 400 feet of hose probably <laughs> it's a ways from the barn um yeah but i'm gonna have to do that soon because you have to water them every day yeah that, what do you do morning and night me it depends i i go by feeling i go down there and walk amongst the plants and Ask dig them. my finger in the soil yeah i'll talk to them a little bit you know i'm, I'm not so close-minded to think that you know if there's an opportunity for my plants if that actually because you know there's all, you always see things saying oh talk to your house plants talk i've heard to your that plants. so i've heard that i talk to them like if i mean you know people are gonna say oh steve's crazy but like the other day i ran out of time to water because i was out there till nine o'clock at night and so i was like all right guys just stay alive for 24 hours because it's supposed to rain tonight it's only a 38 percent chance if it doesn't rain i'll water you tomorrow night Stick with me. Just Here, stuff like that. I mean, that's also to remind myself to water them. Here's the crazy test, though. <laughs> Do they ever talk back? No. So you're fine. But my garden did produce very well last year. It did produce very well last year. Now that I've helped you, it'll probably all go to crap. But no. Uh, what's gonna it's gonna make it go bad is because I have analysis paralysis on that gate, and so that's the last week and a half now because of the boulder that's underneath one of my posts. I just haven't because it's gonna it's got a, that post has got to support the gate and so cutting off of three or four inches it's not gonna necessarily be deep enough. How deep will it go in the ground? It's only like twelve or fourteen inches deep. That'll be fine. We'll concrete it. That'll work. Right. That will work. If you said like three inches, yeah. No, no, no. It's that it's work. pretty deep. I just. I mean, I've, we'll have to I've moved. I don't know thing. if you go over there though. The hole is gigantic because I kept trying to like well. Because you have like a 20 degree play with those timbers coming out of there. And so there's like a 20 degree, you know, from that last post of where I'm trying to dig that hole. So it's just kind of a gigantic hole right now. But that that's one of those big ones probably like you have that you moved from the actual garden area. So it's not going anywhere. I just, that's what's slow. That's what's holding up the whole finishing up of the, the fence and then posting pictures for Farming Friday. Because I don't want to post with... Out of being complete now, but it's looking good out there. Like everything, nice. the see the seedlings. I think I mentioned I had to get some San Marzano from Opachons yesterday, which I was happy <coughs> that they had those seedlings. It's an heirloom paste tomato. And I'm probably mispronouncing it with my Texas slow draw, and it's probably an Italian San Marzano. <laughs> Maybe it's my worst impression ever of Chef Boyardee. Yeah, I apologize. My allergies are kicking my butt right now. Like the last two days, it's been like, ugh. Well, you looked fun. worn out last night on the garden. Yeah, yeah, very I was much. telling my brother, I was like, yeah, Tim had the easy job yesterday. He was just walking around raking some rocks up. I was like, I took the hoe and was, you know, marking all the lines, which were, some of them were crooked. I apologize. You got a little. Nah, keep in you mind. Got some 20-degree turns in your garden rows. Keep in mind before you showed up yesterday, I wrote it till that, raked it. Oh, no, no, I'm I'm just, you know, I'm being funny, man. Like, I enjoy that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's too bad that you didn't bring the little rototiller, though. If I would have brought that, we'd have been done in about 30 minutes. Yeah. 
I was lucky because when I raked it with York rake, a lot of the rocks disappeared, which I'm sure some of them went under. But because at first I was like, because remember I was telling you like, oh, it's not too many rocks. And I looked, I was like, and it's not as bad as yours because it was topsoil. But still, I was kind of like, oh, man, I'm doing this by myself at the time, too. I'm like, this isn't good. But then Andrea and Adelina, she's two years old, just wants to help. And she's mostly helpful. She likes to get into things. And she pulled off a couple of pieces off the potatoes. But um, yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah, she likes she pick rocks up, throw them in the wood. Like, it's cool. And then Danielle is helping us, too. So, um it's a good yeah. little project, and hopefully everything works out well. Put yeah, some of that green pipes around it. Yeah, well, I put that up, and um, yeah, no, I'm excited. To see what happens, and I know it's going to be a weeding chore because all that literally comes from the field out front, and it had sod in it, and even we took sod out. Well, your but... rows are kind of far apart, and so once everything starts popping up, put some uh, straw. I have to know, do that or some wood chips or something but i take my weed eater right down the rows i mean my rows are a little bit wider than yours this year but my rows are the same size as yours last year and uh or, you know the spacing in between them you just take a weed eater down there you just got once they get bigger right and you know you want it to be a good weed eater that doesn't shoot out 16 inches of string and then take, end up take, out, take out all your stuff yeah. like oops but i mean yeah it's not I don't know. I find it fun and relaxing. It's fun and relaxing until you start getting attacked by bugs. Yeah. Towards the end of the night last night, I noticed it was starting to get a little buggy. But it's been it's, – I had one year up there when I was working. You couldn't work up there unless you were in the machine with the doors and windows and everything closed because, like, those little flies. And I think Black it, gnats or yeah, flies something. over there that sting. It, it, it was like a – That left bumps all over me. I, somebody the other day was like, God, what are you, what's wrong with your arms? Like gardening, baby. This used to be like a Stephen King horror novel. Like, it was a couple of years that happened. And then, I don't know, I think because I've moved things and, and dried stuff and up. Your, and your drainage is improved. Yeah, I think that's probably the difference because it was bad. I mean, it was like you just couldn't go out there. You just, uh, it was last year, whenever I was building my garden, I had to put the mask over my yep. Not a mask, man. But the, like a the netting. Thing. netting. Yep, yep. I wore it. I, Nicky would laugh at me. I'm like, whatever, man. It's, it's working. It's a bit enough. Yeah. I had long sleeves on, sweating my rear end off. Granted, it was like 80 degrees or whatever. But So shooting league tonight. Yeah, if the weather holds, which yeah. I think it's supposed to clear up. So I'm kind of disappointed, to. and I thought we were going to get a little bit more rain. Yeah, it's one of those things. Don't wish for it too much because then it might just never stop. That happens. Well, last July it rained about every other day, and so that was nice. I didn't have to water, and I think that's really what helped the garden was the rain last year. Could it be. So we need another every other day of rain, or at nighttime maybe between midnight and 4 a.m.? Only if that was possible. <laughs> that would be perfect. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see if I do any better this week. Try to, anyways. Like, no last... Uh, no Rob tonight though. No, they're they're taking off. I'm gonna have all three of his dogs. But so you have four here. I'll have four dogs here, so they won't be able to run around because they will definitely trample through my garden. I mean, the turkeys are already trampling through it because I don't. I have I have that analysis paralysis on the gate, which is preventing me from putting up the inner lining to the fence, the galvanized netting. I mean, technically, you could put it up. Except, yeah, I could. I could start. I could start it. Yeah, you're right. Maybe I'll go out there and work on it today. It's a good day for it. It is, especially if it holds like this, cloudy. Yeah, that way you don't have to worry about. It's the woodchucks. I'm telling you, the turkeys. I don't think will eat it. They might no, trample I think they stamp it. Stamp on it. Oh, yeah, I... the woodchucks will clean you out. Um, deer will once things get bigger. Raccoons will go after your corn, but you got to wait for that. But. Yeah. I don't think I have too many raccoons. No, it's funny because when I was a kid, used to be, man, when we moved in Croydon, we were building a house. I was probably five or six-ish, and we'd work late up there, you know, and you'd have a lantern, and you put the lantern down, and there would be just 20 of them, like, everywhere, little ones, you know, and then rabies, like, decimated them bad. They're starting to come back now a little bit, but I've seen one over the last few years on my. They're really cute, because you know, but they get in a lot of out from, on the land, yeah. and I have my security cameras. So I've only seen one though, and 
three and a half years, four years. Used old. to be, you'd see more of them than probably anything, but rabies like hit them hard, and which is too bad. They're they're cute. They're the other ones are always getting your trash. Yeah. Skunks will too, but usually the raccoons are the really mischief. I haven't seen trouble. a skunk in about a year. Yeah, my buddy sent me a video the other night of a small skunk. I'm like, dude, if you get sprayed, your wife's not going to let you stay in the house tonight. So yeah. you might not want to mess dog, with that one. My brother's dog got sprayed a couple of years ago. Oh. Yeah. I, no, mean, I bought fun. like every uh, cleaned her and tomato sauce. And it was just right on like her muzzle. And, uh, yeah. We ended up buying, I bought like three different types of skunk shampoo at the stores and it just takes time with all that. It's strong. If yeah. you're like right where a skunk sprays, it's nauseating. Like it's, I had a fireworks show one time in someone's house and it sprayed close by and it was like almost puking. It was horrible. <laughs> Quite the defense to have. Yeah. I, yeah. That is gross. It works. It works. I, some people I won't go way. out there if I see one, even on the like security camera. I'm like, well, have fun in the yard. Yep. You do your thing. <laughs> Just stay Eat a bunch here. of bugs for me. Exactly. <laughs> and my buddy also got a, um, yeah, possum the other day. Caught it in a cage, and which they're like ugly, hideous things, but they're actually not. It's like the their look is deceiving in a way because like they're good for the, they eat tons of ticks. Um, the only place they're not good is if you have horses because they carry a disease that can kill the horses. But um, other than that. They're, you you actually want them around because they kill they eat ticks and yeah I don't mind the, they're, the they're I got a bunch of robins that hang out here in the yard and seen a lot of I've robins seen a this year. few of them going down into the garden but that's usually after I dig they're going through the worms looking for the worms and yeah. the insects or whatever so I don't really mind it but I, I'm probably gonna have to get a scarecrow or build a scarecrow something for the because it's just a lot bigger space I, I I was so blessed last year. Like, no bird, no animals got in there, and I only had a four foot fence up, and that's all I have now. My uncle has like a prison fence to keep the deer out of his garden down in Texas. It's like six yeah. feet tall. It's got barbed wire. Up on, I mean, it looks like he's it's Fort Knox. So wow, yeah, keeps you, humans and animals out of there. You don't need that. And he lives in the middle of nowhere, so I mean, you know, from the human perspective, like that barbed wire. Like maybe it'll... A little excessive. Yeah, you know, we do everything bigger and better down there in Texas. Bigger. You know what they say about Texas? They say nothing but good things, Tennessee. <laughs> 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 um, so the only school thing I saw, it's getting a little harder to find the So we're going to local news? Local news. Yeah, local news. Um, so they're doing open soccer nights for any... Newport High School or middle school players um, come and prove and hone your skills for the upcoming season. They're going to be Tuesdays and Thursdays from 6 to 8, starting Tuesday, July 5th. And it's going to be at the middle school soccer field, which is a new field up there by the parking lot. Um, and for any additional information, reach out to Jeff Miller and Jay Miller at SAU43.org. I did see something that someone said they're like short on players, so if you're you're out there and you think you want to play soccer this year, um, reach out because it sounds like It's a good opportunity. I would encourage everybody. Sports, to me, help mold young men and women into I leaders. Agree. They learn how to win. They learn how to lose. They learn how to rely on each other, communicate. I've never been a big soccer person until, like, Alicia was playing. And I went, and I was like, wow, this is, like, fun to watch. And the girls are aggressive, like – I yeah, it's not crazy. a high-scoring game usually, but, no, the, but it's, the dynamic between the two teams within the players themselves, it good. provides plenty of entertainment and learning opportunities for the And kids. this is from someone that didn't like soccer before. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, soccer's not a sport. Yeah, yeah, they just kind yeah, of have that. That was always the, what I always thought until my daughter started playing it when she was like three or four yeah. years old. And, and now, like, I don't have any – well, Olivia's supposed to play – I think Olivia's going to play soccer this fall. We'll see. She says she is. I, I don't know. But – We'll still have to go to some high school games still because um, even though we don't have girls, you know, our own girls in there, like, it's just fun to watch. Like, it's yeah, a good time. I, I should go and pop in at all the different sporting events at some point as a school board member. True. 
Um, check the quality of the fields, the quality of the coaching, the refing. Those are all things that I have an opinion on that may or may not matter. But, you know, you should, as a school board member, I should go. Yeah, we've had some refing so issues in the past, but there was one person that was, like, banned from refing our games for a year because horrible. Like, that was horrible. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. As a parent, you already think the refs are bad, right? If, if, if yeah, you're biased. Wrong, you're, yeah, we're biased, bias. but this was blatant, like, Wow, that's yeah, pretty bad. It was, but overall, they're they're good. They really are, and I'm sure they'll be needing some refs come this. Yeah, this Mr. fall. Miller, Jeff has mentioned that um, several times. So also, if you're looking for something, yeah. get out there and exercise a little bit, move around. They need refs, umpires for you know all sports. You don't want me to ref soccer though, because I can watch it, but I don't know the rules per se. That yeah. Do you mind if I'm giving me the whistle? I'll just stand there and I'll break up a fight or something. Cause I'm well, we've gonna... had a few that were like that that didn't even leave. Remember the like game? A Twenty foot, like they only ran like twenty feet. They, I don't even think they made it to the midfield. Or... Remember the <laughs> was it the championship game? Well, not championship, but the playoff game down. In... Where were we? Was that it... where you first? That's where we first met Rob. Yeah, it was the first met Rob. That game was. I mean, it was like horrible. The... It was almost a fight. There was all it, was like, it was horrible. That was a couple of years ago. And uh, I was like, what is this? Like, crazy, crazy, yeah. crazy. And some of the fans have no sportsmanship training themselves. No. That was a bad. That was. Some of the students from that school, it was like, wow. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> like, I know that Zeta would yell yes. and scream but i don't think she would yell insults maybe maybe she did if she did i don't want to know yeah not quite like this i mean i do want to know because i'll tell her like hey yeah well now she's an adult so i guess yeah it's no sense telling her anymore no i'll tell her <laughs> <laughs> but no I've, I've i've only heard good things and that's why zeta i think had got the school spirit yeah she was very whatever good. like she was like most school spirit because she would yep. go and Yell very loud. You are you are you are you are Zeta. Absolutely. That's what everybody tells me. Like, oh, yeah. Zeta was at the game. She was. <laughs> yeah, we heard her. We heard her. Didn't see her, but we could hear her. Um, Sand Hill Bridges. Like brag on my daughter. No, that's cool. Uh, Sand Hill Bridge is closed until further notice. They're replacing it. That's the one by Carol Concrete. So. I know you've probably never been up there. There's not like a lot of there's some houses and, um, but you can go up Reed's Mills and then go through like the back way. It's longer, but um, that's the bridge that the old Stevens thing. <laughs> <laughs> they bid 112 thousand less on that bridge, and someone else is doing it. No, oh, so we still don't have any resolution on that. Not that I've heard of. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, yes, big weekend Saturday. We have three events going on, and I'm sure you could find something at any of these events for anyone out there, but Save Astray 5K, 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, doing the 5K, starting towards the end of the runway from what I understand. Yeah, so I'm sure traffic will be so yeah. will be restricted. They didn't really restrict it much when we did the run, but they've had the signs up for a month or two notifying wow, us yeah. so that it'll be going on. So be on the lookout for runners if the roads are not closed. Yes. And then if you want to run it, it's it's for Save Astray, for the uh, Sullivan County Humane Society. So if it's a good benefit, you know, it's a benefit deal. And uh, this one you don't have to go. From what I understand is you're not going down Oak Street and out. Um, yeah, no, I can't remember that road, but out to the bridge, it's not there. So you start back further, so you avoid that whole hill. That's so I was nice. like, hmm, that's a good thing. And then uh, Wings and Wheels, 11 to 2. Excited about this. Like, so where do you park for Wings and Wheels? So. Same place we parked for the 5K or? No. So I think last year, so obviously if you have an old car or whatever, you'd park in the runway. Well, not the runway, but the area there where they park the planes. Uh, in the past, I've seen them put just parking in front of the airport and then down that road. I don't know. I guess depending if it's big, maybe they'll park some down, like when they do fireworks and stuff. I don't really. Know. I would expect it to be big, right? Because it's. I think so. Over this is the combining. Sec- yeah, this the- is this the second one, and then this is the the old Lions Club car right. show they used to do at Mount Sunapee every year. Um, so last year we went and it was good, and then this year, you know, I expect it's going to get bigger and bigger. And uh, 
a lot of fun. Like, I mean, time. bringing business to the town, so that's yeah. No, I'm excited. I'm gonna we'll go down. We'll walk around. We'll talk to some people. We'll. I think I'll bring my truck, so it just adds another vehicle to it. And uh, my uncle just got a old Nova that he got from someone that like needed the gas lines about it. And it's like a in original interior and everything. It's like a '76. That's cool. Like, wow, that's pretty cool. It's a four door, but I'm like, that's cool. How do you cool. find that? Just, just somebody new. We just yeah, I just happened to come upon, and so he said, I think I'm gonna bring it. I said, yeah, bring it down. I love that stuff. Even though it's a four door, it's like when I was a kid, that four door would be like, eh. But now it's you just appreciate it because it's old and old. It's a tank. They just don't make them like that anymore. You know, American it's made. American made. Um, and then Rolling Thunder has their event at the Moose, four thirty to ten barbecue dinner and the band twenty five dollars a person and it all benefits rolling thunder so that should be a good time and i just see there's still tickets available so reach out to the moose and uh yeah get your tickets that that'll be a good time as well and then farmer's market every friday on the common three to six we'll have to see if we can check that out this week see what's down there it's, it's probably bigger. mostly crafts and canned foods maybe from the winter i don't know maybe that's i'm just guess speculating maybe there's some like pickles and stuff like that or well some people might have indoor grow houses that's true some people don't procrastinate like us they're a little well you had your stuff for a while out i procrastinated yeah well I, you know i, I think because you know, i use that indoor outdoor little greenhouse like four shelf thing where i could put all my seed trays on there and i should have rotated them daily or every other day whereas i was rotating them weekly so my peppers grew to the height and the size that i would wanted everything else to grow to so my peppers look great out there like you can't tell my peppers from like the fill-in peppers that i've bought from ones that have died or got crushed so but my tomatoes are this big whereas i was expecting them to be like this like my peppers are right and so that's why the turkeys or you know some animal get in there and crush them JJ, maybe. <laughs> JJ is like, they're on the floor sleeping, <laughs> getting blamed for it. <laughs> I knew it. Nikki, if she watches this later tonight, she'll come and yell at me because her dog <clears> is Don't perfect. blame JJ. <laughs> and then on uh, July 9th from 11.30 to 1, uh, Goshen Fire Department Chicken Barbecue, um, 12 bucks is the cost. Um, it's pre, pre-buy. How much is it? 12 bucks. That's not bad. For a whole no. chicken or? Half chicken. Half chicken? Yep. Um, that's affordable. Yeah, it's a donation for them too, so it's it's another charitable thing. And something else I did see is uh, not that I think this will necessarily happen, but they're trying to spread this "Don't Buy Gas" July third through the fifth. So buy it before, buy it after. Try to send a message to gas companies or something. You know, which I get it. I mean, if we all stopped driving for a week, you'd see a big difference because that would be a huge hit. But that's hard to do. Do we, do we need to send a message to the gas companies or to the government? Well, yeah. Depends who you ask. Exactly. Gas companies blame the government. Government, well, some of the government blames the gas companies. Um, I'm sure it's a little bit of both. Yeah, my buddy works for Exxon, so I've had a couple conversations, and it's a lot of it from his perspective anyway. It's coming from the regulations that uh, the administration has put on because it's hampered it, even though he's, you know, the resident is on the news. Well, on day one, when you talking about how it's not his policies and it's the companies and their profits and everything else. Well, when you literally take office in the same day, kill a Keystone Pipeline, and then you say you're going after oil companies and everything else. Yeah, well, and that's that's like the the oil company's main thing is like you said your your goal is to shut us down and your policies right. are showing us that. So your actions are meeting your words. And now you're trying to blame us, right? Which I get. Like they, you know, they they make. I mean, you're going to business to make money for a profit. Right. I mean, there's a meme going around that you know, double their profit from last year. But you can arguably that say that last year, this year, there's still a lot of people staying home, so they weren't selling as much gas. Right. They're, yeah. People aren't. It's people uh, are going inward and turning into hermits. I'm more concerned about, so the gas prices are going up. But we know gas eventually should come back down. It's done it for years, yeah, right? Yeah, cyclical also. I mean, but your electrical rates are going to double in New Hampshire. I've never seen them come back down. 
It just doesn't happen. So even if other things come down, electrical rates aren't going to come back down. We're going to start shooting the show outside, use some natural lighting. Yeah. I'm not going to be able to afford the... I mean, my bill is already 300 bucks a month, minimum. So now it's going to be 600 bucks. Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, wake up. Uh, yeah. This is scary. So, Andrea found this one. Uh, ornate blacktail found in New Hampshire. And it's a venomous snake from uh, southwest Texas and Mexico. Um, I have a picture of it. I'm going to throw it up here. Uh, it kind of looks like a, a pit viper, um, where, you know, the head. And so we do have timber rattlers here that are protected in New Hampshire. So if you see one, don't kill it. You could call the game warden. You come out and remove it. You know, usually they're just along the Merrimack Valley, though. Or do the they river. remove it or do they... They will remove Fence them. off your property and then you're no longer allowed to... No, they'll they'll remove it. Um, but those are just along the Merrimack Valley from what I've ever, from what I've ever understood. But this snake doesn't belong in New Hampshire at all. Um, and the person wrote, like, she was very thankful for the training that she must have taken at one point to recognize this snake. Um, man, can you imagine a kid or something coming up, come upon this thing and... Uh, so my guess is someone... Yeah, because they probably don't have much anti-venom for that snake up here. Not here. No, I mean... Uh, if uh, any at all. Right. I mean, Texas, okay. Yeah. Of course. It's just normal. Or Florida, like... Um, yeah, that's scary. And my guess is, and this is just total speculation, but someone probably owned this. Um, and, and maybe you legally can even own them. I, I don't know. Every state's different. You can own venomous snakes. Some you can't. It's weird. There's no set standard for snakes, but either got out or was just let go or because this thing didn't travel all the way from texas to here hey my dad's philosophy was the only good snake is a dead snake i now i don't necessarily operate like that around here because they're not all poisonous but yes. like in my in my defense for anybody who's a snake lover and thinks that we're horrible people my dog got bit by a copperhead protecting me and my brother once my dog got bit a couple other times just trying to protect the yard. So, I mean, they're they're plentiful, and they, you know, mess you up, mess your animals up. Yeah, I mean, we don't, we have no venomous snakes up here except, like I said, timber rattlers in that small, like, region. Um, that's the nice thing about New Hampshire. But you see something like that. Yeah, like, if I saw something like that, I I gotta be honest. My I natural think, instinct would have been, ho. Yeah, it would have been dead. Head. Then I would have called the game warden. and I probably would have gotten arrested because it's some... But, you know, I, I know to look out for timber rattlers, but that does not look like a milk snake. That doesn't look like no. was those, like 12 snakes in New Hampshire. I mean, I looked at them all before when yeah. I moved here, so I would know and not panic if I saw one. My dad always said that check it adders would make you sick if you played with it or something. But that's a big difference between venomous and making you sick. And we have those black snakes up here, like the water ones or whatever. I've seen them on the... Northwoods Law Show or the one in Maine they used to where it started, you know, and uh, they get pretty big too. And I, I, I'll be honest, I would probably put the hoe to that thing too. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, I like garden snakes. I'll usually put gloves on because they have this musk that sticks to your hands and stinks so bad. Because I like bringing them in the house and scaring the crap out of the girls with them. It's a good time. <laughs> and then I let them go. Cause snakes go. They eat bugs and stuff. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I, I have. But I have one I took a picture of the other day in my backyard right by my back door. How you have a freaking ant hill. I, I, yeah, hey, I am trying to be one with nature. Nikki hates that ant hill, and I refuse to kill it because that ant, those ants aren't bothering us right now. Apparently she didn't watch the show where I told her how to kill him. It wasn't <laughs> even my intention. It was just part of the show. <laughs> uh so Claremont this Saturday is celebrating its 125th anniversary of the Claremont Opera House. So uh, seven o'clock. Um, it looks like they're, I don't know, the play is Stage Whispers, a living history retold. Um, we'll put this up so people can see this meet there, this thing. Um, Advertisement flyer. 1897 to 2022, which I believe the Opera House in Newport is, I think it's older. All I know is we used to build things beautifully, and now everything just looks like a box. Very true. Yeah, like, like, I'm not impressed with modern architecture. Like They act yeah. like, you know, look at these lines. No, no, no. Like, I like that 
opera house. I like the old churches. Yeah, there's stuff that like lasted. that. Yeah, it lasted. It's it's magnificent looking. It inspires. There's, like you show. Like I get it. People like Frank Lloyd Wright and his lines and whatever garbage. I'll use your terms here. Um, crap. <laughs> but you know, there's just something about the old seventeen. The, all those buildings that are still standing. That it's just to me, it ins- it's inspiring. And the new stuff when I look around, it's not very inspiring. Oh, there's a building. It's a bar now, and my own personal take. No, you right. know, We can agree to disagree. I'm not going to be mad no. at you if you like yeah. Frank Lloyd Wright. And some of his stuff actually is kind of cool looking. But the opera houses, when you drive into either of our towns and some of the older buildings, they're just yeah. It's like it is. It's we built that with our with horse carts and our bare hands. And there's still there's a it's a bar on Bourbon Street and Tanner Bourbon Street. New Orleans now that it's been there since I think it was like 16 something. It's still there. Anything you build now, like no, this thing won't be here in my, 300 years. Yeah. My chimney will be there in a hundred years is what I was told. Yeah. But someone will buy it, demo it, put a brand new place. No, up. I know, but you know, if yeah, in theory, if yeah. the worst thing were to happen, my chimney would still stand while the rest of my house would be dust. True. So, uh, it's a giant chimney, by the way. It's well, yeah. Nice. I'm describing it for the listeners. It's huge, wide, tall. I'm yeah. impressed with my chimney. That's cool. Unfortunately, it costs a lot to get it repaired. <laughs> Masonry is expensive. It's, it's like gigantic. an art. Mm-hmm. So I uh, hikered out over the weekend hiking. Uh, you have that story. Yeah, it was up on was it Presidential Ridges. Yeah, the Presidents Ravine. So Mount Washington got snow this weekend. I mean, it was horrible conditions, and you know it, it was a risk. He was a solo hiker. There were some other hikers that were rescued from around that area as well over the weekend. It was just bad weather. It was raining. And there was snow accumulating. That was turning into ice with the sleet and. Like, when you read the stories, it's like, well, how does that happen? If it's raining, how does it snow accumulate? And then if it's sleeting, then it's not raining. But I guess it was just a mixture of conditions. They had to hike him another mile up, and then they drove him down, but it, the hypothermia had set in. Yeah, it's, it's, so it's if you go hiking, you have to be prepared, especially in New England, because the weather changes so much. Yeah, and Mount Washington is known for... yeah. Wind gust, crazy weather. Pictures of the Cog Railroad, which they had shut down for the weekend because of snow and ice. And, and like, I was like, holy, wow, like, nuts. I'm glad I didn't go. Yeah, like, in the middle of June. Yeah, it happens. You get snow, you get, like, so you have to be prepared for uh Yeah, so it's things. tragic. It is. Um, but always being prepared is the key thing. And also, I noticed, learned this on Northwoods Law, too. So if you're someone that hikes, you know, more than us, which once is probably more than us, but but you you know you hike a lot. They have a card that you buy. I think it's fifty bucks a year. So if you have to be rescued, if you have this card, you don't have to pay for your rescue. If you don't, they charge you for your rescue, which could be hundreds of thousands of dollars depending on your rescue. I wonder if they have that in Colorado. <laughs> you know, I'm going on that know. elk hunt. Just in case you need 10, to be rescued. Feet. I need to get me a Bane mask and start just walking around. 10,000 feet. Reducing my oxygen intake. That's going to be a good time for you. <laughs> All right, meme of the day. I love this one. Using CNN, MSNBC, CBS, NBC, and or ABC. I also say Fox News, too. I uh, will add that. Uh, to support your arguments... It's like saying you're a marine biologist because you watch SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> <laughs> it's so uh, true, and from my point of view. It's true. Yeah, I agree. Of course, you have to be a biologist now to determine male and female, apparently. A little, it's crazy. We live in a bizarre world. We do. Uh, then this, just have this one national story. Uh, well, it's even kind of regional, too. It is, actually, yes. Yeah, right, nationally and regional because it's out of Maine. Supreme Court strikes down a Maine law that discriminated against religious schools. Um, 
In a victory for religious liberty and freedom, uh, school choice, the U.S. Supreme Court on Tuesday struck down a main law that unconstitutionally discriminated against secondary schools. Um, 6-3 ruling. Um, pro, uh, so the court ruled 6-3 that Maine's prohibit. Prohibition. Prohibition. That's not a word you hear very often. Um, on using private school tuition assistance for religious schools violates the free exercise clause of the First Amendment. In the case, Carson versus Mekin, um concerned tuition assistance program and parents who lived in school districts that do not provide a public secondary school for their children. And uh, the program made funds available to assist these families with private or chartered tuition and provide that chosen school met state accreditation requirements um, and that it was a non-secondary in accordance to the First Amendment. Um, non-sectarian. Sectarian. What does that mean? Like non-religious. Ah. It is interesting, though, because it is a – so So f the church and state separation, but I guess, you know, it's still a school, though. And so if your rules are to provide for an education, you know, and if there's not that secondary – you know, in your town, so I could see how it would be discrimination. Plus it's tax money. It's tax dollars. So it's our money, not in Maine's case. It's Maine – People's well, what money. they're saying is you can't send your kid to a public school that teaches religion because it's public funds and separation of church and state does not allow you to right. spend government money. They've totally morphed the you know separation of church and state into something different, and you know the the religious people could argue. The exact opposite. If there were, if, but there, this is in places where there's no public school, so I won't even do a what aboutism. Right. So there's no public school available. There is a religious charter school, right. which is still required if they're accredited to right. provide you with an education to make you successful in life. I'm sure it's similar, probably to New Hampshire. I mean, it is sure. our neighbor. Yeah. And so the only difference is, is you get religion taught as well as reading, rat, reading, math, writing, all that good stuff. Right. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Um, it kind of goes to the Croydon thing. Like, Croydon is the first school to be like, well, no, we can send public money to, say, the monastery or any public or a private school, which up till Croydon's lawsuit and everything, you couldn't do it. It's illegal. Now it's a Croydon choice, and it's like a nationwide because they stood up and said, no, we're going to take public money, we're going to send it to private schools. And, and personally, I don't see the, what's the big deal. It's the child's still getting an education. So if I want to send my kid to a private school and it's X amount that would be going to Newport, then why shouldn't that money go to the private school and I'd have to pay the difference, like if it costs more or maybe it costs less. But, um, yeah, I don't see – I don't see the kids still getting an education. Yeah. Uh, they're just taking away parents, trying to take away parents' ability to choose what they want for their kids. Right. No, the government provided this, so you have to use it. No. Nah. People forget the government is us and it's our tax dollars. <laughs> People forget this all the time. People are relying on the government. Way too much. Way too much. Yeah. I don't the know, man. Government is not your friend. Government like, is not your like, friend. I'm not saying it's bad, but I'm saying the bureaucracy has gotten so polluted with, you know, people's putting their own, you know, they, this is for history repeating itself. That's why they got rid of nepotism, but, you know, nepo nepotism still occurs. Yeah. You see it everywhere. Right. It just, but it, it's supposed to not occur because people take care of those that they know and they like or whatever. And that's how, you know, it's human nature too, by the way, is, oh, we get along, so I'll help you, you help me, and people that we don't get along with, who cares? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm not that cynical, but that's... It's been going on. You can go back and read it in American history. I forget when it was because I learned about it so long ago. But I do know that it occurred and that we passed rule. I mean, you said that's when they came up with the civil exam, right? So that was to curb nepotism, hiring somebody that you like or that you're related to. Right. Like they had to pro show that they can actually perform the job. That's why they came up with civil service exams. So, again, I digress. Study history. History is very important. It repeats itself. You hear it all the time, but people still don't like pay attention. But 
Uh, Not this time, Tim. It'll be different this time because I'm involved. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good luck with that. Yeah, nuts. Uh, positive meaning of the day. Um, a negative mind will never give you a positive life. It's very true. Um, yeah, very true. You could be positive about everything in your life the best you can. Get rid of negative things. and Because if you surround yourself with negative people, that's just what happens. If you surround yourself with positive people... Hey, that's why I talk to my plants and my trees. When I look up and I see a big dead limb up there that I can't reach and it's going to fall eventually, I, I say, hey, don't let that fall on me when I walk by. <laughs> uh, and uh, we all want to thank our sponsors, too. Uh, Let's try to make everybody laugh. Wicked Awesome uh, Adventures, LLC. Christy Kibbe, if you have any travel needs, I still put this back here. Even though I can't see it, but I think the new... Banner when I'm putting the sponsors on the side has been working pretty good. Yeah, it so. looks good. So, because we couldn't really figure out how to darken that up. Yeah, without changing it. And right, changing the logo. And, I don't think that's what we yeah. should be doing. Uh, Noise or Us. I know I saw on their Facebook yesterday too, same thing. Like, you know, get your fireworks for the rush at the 4th, because that's what a lot of people do, wait until near the 4th. And so, if you want to get your fireworks, now's a good time. Well, the supplies are obviously yeah. there. and. And then, uh, you know, Twin State Paving. Uh, I think Melia's worked all week, so. That's good. Yeah. I didn't see him yesterday. Of course, I got home late, but. Uh, I should call him and have him give me at least an estimate so I know how much I need to save up for. Yeah. Or maybe I can't afford it. I don't know. I mean, it's a long driveway. Do you at least, maybe it's less than you think it is. Yeah, it might be. I don't know. We just get to watch Melia work. That'd be worth it right there. Go buy me a lottery ticket, and then I can afford everything. That's, New heater, more efficient heater. It's probably not a good approach for you to take. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I don't work. This is my job. But playing the lottery. <laughs> well, no, I'm just sitting here talking to you every morning. This is that and, you know, my school board duties. That's about all I, and my gardening. School board, what, July 14th? Yes. So it's still a little bit of time, but... Don't forget, if you want to run or put your name in the hat. Yeah, they're looking for a member. Um, there's five or six questions on the SAU website. You can answer them and email them to either the Super or Jenna Darling. And, uh, and it's all on the website. If, yeah, it's if, on. And if you don't have internet, you're probably not watching this. So. That's true. So, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, cool. I was about to say, if you don't have internet, then you can go do that. But we're broadcasting on the internet so true story you know. but if you have friends that don't have internet that are interested they can probably swing by the sau and pick up a copy if you don't have internet at this point you must live under a rock well we live in newport new hampshire this is not the best internet but you have internet i do your internet's better than my internet speaking of that they were supposed to come yesterday again and i don't remember them being there yesterday of course i wasn't home much but i don't remember anyone telling me they were there yesterday either well, maybe they have that new program where if they call you and you don't answer before the second ring, they hang up and don't show up. Allegedly, like the heating company did to my brother. But, but here's the thing I'm going to say. Your brother can go with a local, smaller heating company. I can't do that for the Internet. That's true. Consolidated sucks. <laughs> we'll end the show with that. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow, and uh, have a great day.